President Biden has signed off on a new funding request for a revamped COVID-19 vaccine that, quote, works. Let's watch. Mr. President, can you say anything about the uptick of COVID cases and new variant? Yes, I can. Matter of fact, I signed off this morning on a proposal we have to present to the Congress a request for additional funding for a new vaccine that is necessary, that works. And tentatively, not decided finally yet, tentatively, it is recommended that, it would likely be recommended that everybody get it, no matter what they got before. Biden's announcement comes amid a spike in COVID cases and hospitalizations around the country. However, the president's ask will likely face an uphill battle in the upper chamber. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul already signaled his opposition, posting on X, quote, So to recap, one, POTUS is saying the vaccine they're currently promoting and they mandated does not work. Two, he wants more funding for another one. That's a no from me. The rise in COVID cases also prompted the reemergence of mass mandates in some places, but people might want to slow down before going that route. A new study reshared by the National Institutes, National Institutes of Health reveals that N95 masks may expose users to dangerous levels of toxic chemicals that have been linked to seizures and even cancer. Now, this study was led by researchers from John Buick National University in South Korea, and it found that some disposable masks contain more than eight times the U.S. recommended limit of toxic volatile organic compounds, or TBCS. They also noted that the level of toxicity can be decreased by simply letting the mask air out for 30 minutes, before use. So this is, you know, just one study. Obviously take it with a grain of salt as you should take all these studies that say masks are great, masks are terrible. You know, we've got a, a vaccine. We've got a variety of findings on all of these things and it's still kind of inconclusive, which I think should, should um, push people away from making very definitive or, you know, declaratory statements about this. This is what works and this is what everybody not only should do, but must be forced to do. Um, in terms of the vaccine, do, does Pfizer or Johnson & Johnson or whoever it is really need more taxpayer dollars to develop their next vaccine? Please go ahead and develop it. And I don't have a problem with them, you know, reaping the profits of the vaccine as long as it's not forced on anybody. It's not paid for by us. But that's not the way it's gone. Obviously, in recent history, it's, it has been forced on people. Um, I, I can't imagine this is a this is something that a, a lot of the American people, at least conservatives, want to do. Uh, but here we are again. Yeah, it's an interesting question. Uh, what warrants government invested uh, investment in a particular yeah. pharmaceutical? Uh, I, I suppose the idea would be if there is a broad public health interest in having it. For example, the American economy shut down for a year, huge impacts as a consequence of this global pandemic. It wasn't an American phenomenon, obviously, and the economic consequences of it were felt around the world in various ways. Um, and I think the question is, if we know it did it once before, it's a, there's a possibility of um, new variants that could potentially put us in a situation where the disease was as deadly as it was prior to the first vaccines, which did work. They did work. They were useful for that variant, and they continued to work to prevent people from having the hospitalization and death. So I, do, I would push back against Rand Paul's comments there. I don't think that saying that, articulating the idea that we want vaccines that work better, which I think that Joe Biden was getting at, isn't an admission of some kind that the current vaccines don't work. They don't do what we would like them to do, which is to prevent the spread of COVID, but that's exactly why they want more funding. So, you know, I can I can see a world where, yeah, I think it would be justified to give government funding to provide a vaccine that actually performs that specific function. One, because it would prevent COVID from ever being an issue again. We could just get to the bottom of this and end it because we would be able to stop the transmission. And two, I think it would really what? re, re enhance the, the 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 faith that people have in these kind of medical interventions. Why interventions would in the, the next place. vaccine be any better at shutting down the spread of COVID than the last? I mean, by the time it comes out, this is the problem. By the time the vaccine comes out, it's a different variant than what um, than what that vaccine is tailored to. I mean, this is an issue with the boosters right now. Honestly, if the government wants to do something that would probably be useful, they should probably work toward cutting down on whatever 
bureaucratic or regulatory process for approval for these things so that people can, people who want them, again, I'm not making anyone take them, but people who really want to take them or feel the, the risk of COVID or whatever new variant is more threatening to them, be able to take them um, earlier. Wh whatever can be done to speed up that process wasn't is argument, probably what should be done. Wasn't the argument during COVID that people felt like the vaccine was rushed and they had all these concerns about the health implications of it because those some of those protections were eliminated that in order to get it to the market more quickly? certainly some people's argument. Um, it just, it does, it does start to feel sometimes like, I'm open to a lot of people's concerns, but it does start to feel sometimes like there's a pinata swing in the middle of the room and everyone will just attack it from whatever direction to make some point about how much they don't like well, COVID. People, well, those people so, didn't like, whatever. they thought it was unsafe and untested and rushed and it was being forced on people. I'm not going to force it on anyone. Okay, so I think it should be up to you. There's no mandate. So now the question is how much government resources should go into this. I, I, I'm not a, I'm not an expert. I don't know what the limits of science are. I don't, mm -hmm. if, if, if you were, t if the scientists told me that, that it was possible if they put their minds to it for long enough to create, what is it called? A sterilizing vaccine that actually neutralized spread. Then I would definitely you, think that was worth. Would you believe them? Yes. I would believe it if they published scientific studies and demonstrated that that's the case. Of course. Why, why no, no, if they, if, they just, if they just said, yes, this is the next round of funding we need, and then we're going to have, I mean, like, think about how we've, uh, we've talked about Bill Gates, you know, pivoting from, from a vaccine to, uh, like, an inhaler is his next dream, it, because it's just, it's just, like, what the company's selling and what the company wants no, to I do. No, I think you have to demonstrate it, just like anybody who tries to make any product it didn't get funding yeah. for it has to demonstrate the efficacy of the product. Now, people do lie and there are scams. There is this allegation now that Vivek Ramaswamy made his money by buying a drug that had already failed multiple clinical trials, changing the name of it, having his mother, who's a doctor, writing a, 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 a new survey, not like a new research, but basically a new survey that indicated the drug could be more promising, having the stock go up on the drug, profiting from that, and then the drug ultimately fails anyway. So there, there's definitely scams, and it's incumbent on the people who approve these things, to, who have scientific knowledge, to actually assess the possibility uh, of these interventions being successful. I'm not the person to do that. And maybe there's a good reason not to trust people who are in government currently to accurately make those kind of assessments. I think that's a fair critique. But am I just categorically against the idea that it could be scientifically possible to make a sterilizing vaccine and that that wouldn't be an enormous public health benefit? No. So, I mean, I think the question is not should the government fund this, but are we, can we have some transparency about the processes um, that scientists are undertaking that, that might lead us more confidence or less confidence in the this funding actually leading to a good result. And then the other question I would ask is, if the likelihood of actually getting a sterilizing vaccine is relatively low, would some of that money be better spent improving air quality in public spaces, getting um, uh, uh, air, air filters and things in, in schools and the like? That will help us deal with the situation that we have now. Did you see, there was an infuriating story in the New York Times this morning from my least favorite, um, coronavirus reporter Apoorva Mandavili on the state of the air filtration issue in schools. It's, it's all about that. Uh, you would be very interested in this article uh, about how, you know, schools closed last time. If there's another wave, can we just keep them open this time if, if we improve the air quality? But it's, a, it's very frustrating because, as she acknowledges in the article, um, $200 billion was allotted for this purpose. Another $300 billion was given to state governments, and one of the things they can spend it on is this. You can't argue the money's not there. The money was set aside yeah. for this. It just didn't happen. Yeah, I, I would love to see some of the people who have been keeping the fight for civil liberties with respect to COVID issues alive, mm -hmm. really drilling down, trying to do some investigative research. And now we've had time. I mean, obviously you can't, what it, it takes there. a little bit of time, but now it's been, it's and, been a and while. pressuring the Biden administration to do more, to put those things in these public spaces, including schools. That's, I think, a really useful um, path yeah. for people's political energies. And it's, it's pushing the government to do more to protect people, particularly our kids, as opposed to telling them just to, do absolutely nothing, which I think could really backfire depending on the course of this virus. Mm. We will continue to monitor that, and we will be back with more rising in just a minute.